You may have seen this tweet back in May. Someone tweeted, GraphQL is a trap. Uh, and then followed up with a tweet thread detailing their experience with GraphQL. The traps in GraphQL usually occur when you take something GraphQL is good at, and then you misapply it or misunderstand it. So let's walk through uh, some different ways in which something can turn into a trap. So our first trap is free lunch migrations. The trap thought might be, uh, there are so many GraphQL success stories. Let's just switch from our existing API to GraphQL. Many teams choose to migrate using a GraphQL layer that sits on top of and delegates to the existing web API. But that comes with performance trade-offs and costs engineering time. And especially at small companies, uh, this might be too much to trade for the velocity you would gain with GraphQL. Make sure you have weighed the trade-offs of moving to GraphQL. You gain a lot, but don't forget the cost of migration and the hidden cost of maintaining possibly multiple APIs. So our next trap is a generic graph database. So you, a trap thought you might have is, my database has data and relationships. Let's use GraphQL and turn that into a web API. That is true, but databases aren't great for hosting business logic. Databases also store data that you don't want on the internet. So you'd need a place to choose what goes in the schema and transform that data, which is business logic. So how do we avoid the trap? Well, you can introduce a dedicated business logic layer uh, between your storage layer, your database, and your web API layer, GraphQL. Our next trap, queries for everyone. A trap thought you might have is, GraphQL is great at letting clients query for the data they want. So we should use this for our public API, which anyone can sign up for. A public GraphQL API means everyone can easily query data, everyone, including people you don't want querying data. And people querying data in ways you don't want them to. Sometimes people request 10,000 items instead of the 50 you expected. So in practice, public GraphQL APIs need a way to identify and handle uh, malicious queries. This can be through query cost or complexity analysis, or only allowing a subset of queries, or other such techniques. Uh, our next trap is everybody gets a schema. Our teams are organized by features or domain object, so let's just split up our schema along the same lines. So this does help solve the problem of who owns which parts of the schema, um, and it solves some ownership problems. But it also introduces problems, like stitching the schema together to avoid collisions, um, or while avoiding collisions, and maintaining consistency across multiple schemas, and then also maintainability across time and change. So making sure your schema that has types that align cor correctly or managing duplicate types becomes a major focus of engineering time. So how do we avoid the trap? Build a single schema that accurately describes your data, your web API layer. Power that schema with business logic, which is separated into units, services, or libraries owned by your teams. And make it easy to update the central schema. So our next trap is versions. So a trap thought might be, if there are breaking changes to our schema, we need to make it obvious. Let's just version our schema, the whole schema. In GraphQL, if you version your entire schema, you have multiple schemas. And each schema you support brings maintenance overhead. Fields are the unit of compatibility, not endpoints and not schemas. So if you want to change the name of a field or the type it returns, you just add a new field and deprecate the old one. So there are definitely ways in which we can get ourselves trapped. But there are a few principles that can help guide our decisions when we are working with GraphQL and thinking about GraphQL so we can avoid the traps. So one strength of GraphQL is that it makes it easy to see what data is available and where. We all feel like we all know that. Um, if we have a single schema, data that is added to the schema is available for everyone to use, and we can really gain the benefits of modeling our data as a graph. And having a single source of truth for each domain object means we only need to add or update or remove one time. And so that means we can maximize reuse. This also makes in pulling in more data trivial. And it also makes navigating our schema easier. 
So focus on making the scheme intuitive and usable for everyone. Another GraphQL strength is GraphQL makes it easy to represent your problem domain, especially data relationships. So model your data based on relationships of that data. This creates an accurate model of how your data actually fits together. Uh, model your data intuitively. Real people are making queries, so help them by modeling your data how it actually fits together. We'll be able to navigate from where we are through relationships to data about each of them. Our next GraphQL strength is GraphQL makes API changes easy. We can easily add and deprecate fields in the schema, so don't worry about explicitly versioning um, your API. And you can add a lot of fields. Uh, you can add a lot of fields before you have a problematic number of fields in the, in the schema, so just don't worry about it. Uh, having clear standards or patterns for your schema can help your schema evolve in a way that's maintainable, and that means you'll have a single way of representing errors, paginated lists, uh, date times, things like that. And if everyone makes up new conventions, then there is no convention. Predictability matters uh, for developing quickly, and it's much easier if we have consistent terminology, locations for things, representations. So this makes it easy to assume how to query data and then what to expect. A consistent schema is easier to understand. But like any technology, GraphQL makes trade-offs. Sometimes those trade-offs can turn into traps if we don't weigh them carefully. But we can avoid these traps by leaning into what GraphQL is actually really good at. And what we get is a consistent, intuitive, and maintainable schema that's usable by everyone and puts clients first. Thank you.